Welcome back, fabricators, for another session of learning more things about fabric. Today, we're diving in deep into the SQL endpoint for the Power BI Lake House environment. Tommy's going to do our demo today. Tommy, take it away. So you made it as uh, we've done before, or you've really focused on majority at this point, the Great Lake Lake House here. And that's been everything we focus on now. Today, it's going to be all about looking into the SQL endpoint and it has a little different symbol they're interconnected but that's where we're going to start today so why don't we just go ahead we're going to go click directly into the great lake and here actually brought to uh, a view that we actually have very similar to the great lake but it's all focused on the tables and what we really mean here by sql endpoint is we can actually query everything so why don't we actually start at the ribbon and we'll look at the very top here Going directly to a table, I can actually see I have a lot of options available to me here. Uh, we can refresh the schema here in the data set. We can look at some of the settings. So why don't we just take a look at the little wrench symbol shown on the home screen. Gear symbol. Gear symbol, widget, yes, gear, gear works as well. And you can actually see here there's a SQL connection string. And we can actually use that in any SQL platform that we have. Uh, this includes our Azure Data Studio. That includes our SSMS, but for now, we're just going to focus on the ability, ability that it's already there. So let's kind of focus now on, we can actually run two types of SQL queries here. We can do a new SQL query or a visual query. The SQL query is simply just writing your code in SQL. Uh, for those who are SQL backgrounds, the visual query is a little similar to uh, what's in the data flows in the, the view to actually look at the dependencies. And we can actually run this here off the tables. The final two options, we can actually create a new report using off this default data set. And, um, because in every lake house, there's a default data set that's created. Or we can create a new measure off that default data set, all here in the SQL endpoint. The uh, second option is looking at the ribbon for reporting. So this is all focused again on this default data set. So the first one is looking at a new report. Same option as on the home ribbon. We can create a new Power BI data set and actually choose the tables that we want and create a reconstruct our relationships and the schema here as well. Again, we can manage the default data set. To reiterate, every time we create a, a lake house, it's a, there's a managed default data set in the background. We can update the schema using our the default data set. And again, we can create a measure uh, using this default data set as well. So the last, uh, yes. Yeah, one thing I want to point out here is this is a feature set that is new to Fabric. And this is kind of Microsoft's way of taking things that were typically SQL Server and auto-generating or auto-creating an analysis services model from those artifacts, which I think is really cool here. This is really blurring the line between a SQL Server and analysis services, it's kind of really saying this is yeah. the same technology. It's all one and the same. So very interested to see how this will develop and looking forward to seeing new feature developments coming out of this area because this feels like a data mart, but grown up a lot more for, for Power BI now. We've had that discussion, yes. And the, the amazing thing here is everything that we've done so far is all in the same tab. There's no other application I've had to open. I've done this all from the same browser tab. So let's actually do a demo here and let's actually show here. Wait, Tommy, uh, you missed yes. one ribbon there. Oh, you, we did the table tools. Yeah, you have a you have a, a table selected called batting, and then there's one more ribbon that is dynamic. So this this ribbon, and you notice it was a little bit different colored than the other ones before you clicked on it because it only appears when the property in the SQL endpoint is selected. So because you have a table selected, the table tools appears. Absolutely. So let's move on to a demo and you can actually see here, I'm going to uh, collapse the tables and we have this ability here looking at my queries and I can actually see I have a saved query and I also have some shared queries that's uh, between me and Mike that we've actually built. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go directly into one of the SQL queries here and it's actually a query I've already created. And you may have noticed we've actually moved at the very bottom. You may have not caught this. But there's four, three main areas here. We are in the data view. Once I click on a query, I go to the query view and I can create my visual or SQL queries. And I actually have a query here that Mike can view on his computer as well when he's logged in. But I'm looking at actually just a general SQL query. 
looking at, uh, and we'll run it here, just looking at the top salaries for batters and getting some of the main stats here. Again, and you can actually see it sorted by uh, our salary, but this is all general SQL, not no limitations in terms of running your SQL query. Mike, how cool is this? I love data. This looks great. I don't I don't know as much about data as I do for uh, baseball stuff, but this is definitely very slick. And I, I really like the split view that you see here yes. where the SQL is on the top and the data comes down below. This feels very um, Power Query esque in some degree. And then I also like the idea here that th this is where, I mean, I can't tell you the number of people have asked me, we run a write SQL against our data's, yeah. our data's. So this makes total sense. And again, it's really that data mark store grown up, which we really love here. And there's a few options actually here when we're on the, after I've already run the query here, and I can see the table view or the rows view, but let's actually take a look here. I'm under the results. I can download the Excel file or I can visualize results. So let's have some fun. Click on the visualize results. And I guess we have to select some of the text in our statement to try again. Yeah, in your SQL statement, you technically could have multiple select statements in that SQL statement. So what it's mm -hmm. asking you to do here, it's saying grab the single select statement that you care about in order to generate or visualize that information. So right. it, it's you could technically in your queries have three, four, five different select statements happening all at the same time inside that query. It's just making sure you select one object so you can start visualizing things. So looks like we have a few errors here, even though we're doing a sum by HR. But the general idea is it looks like this is a new feature that Power BI is being able to, I can quickly visualize the table on the right-hand side. Get rid of the actually, HR. Does it work with just player ID? Can we get player IDs to show up? What's, what's the details issue here? Not sure what the details is. The order by clause. Oh, we just take off the order by clause. So it did give us a bit of an error there. So we can go back and resort this item. So we're just going to do the table and undo the sorting of that order by statement works. in SQL. Yeah. It's good that it gave us a good message here because, <laughs> you know, it's a bad demo if it doesn't work, uh, but great messaging. Okay, well, much better that. now. Yeah. That's what we want. Okay, good. So yeah, I want to the highlight. The big thing here is the table on the right hand side. That's the query that I ran. So if I just wanted to run a quick query, I now I have the full Power BI visual set available to me. I'm not creating a new report. It's just a quick, easy view. Let's hang on this point for a second here. This is really impactful. The amount of time you spend rolling through tables, oh my God. grabbing things, selecting stuff, filtering things down, this is not a real report. This is not a real data set. You're, you're simply making a single little view of a table of information and building some Power BI stuff on top of this. This isn't saved anywhere, Tommy, right? You're not no, saving this no. as a report. This is just purely playing with Power BI, loading this single um, table as a single data point for this report. It's a, it's a quick build here. I love this. I absolutely love this. I, I can quickly see without creating a whole new report and think about those random requests that you get uh, that Alice Rodriguez here or that this R row here has the highest salary, but also some of the highest home runs as well. And I've done this without creating another report. I like it. I really so, like it. This is a it, cool feature. We'll have to keep tuned and stay in tune with this one a little bit more in the future and see where this goes. Maybe right. in the future, this becomes a full-fledged data set at some point in time. But a uh, really neat idea of being able to explore and really visualize your data with the full power of Power BI, but just from table data that comes yeah. out of SQL. This is cool. Yeah. And I mean, we even have the new card, or no, we don't have the new card visual yet here. But on the bottom right, you can't see because our screens are there. If I wanted to save this as its own report, I could. Or I can just cancel and get out of it. Oh, wait, then, hold on. Let me move okay. my screen here a little bit. Yes. So you can save as report there in the bottom right-hand corner. So you can go from this view directly into a report build right. if you like what you're seeing, if you're, you're building some stuff here. This is interesting. I really like yeah. this. Good, good idea here. But generally, I'm going to click on cancel. And then I think the other big item here, Mike, is if I want to save this as a view in my SQL database, I can do that as well. And this is, I think, going to be really powerful for a lot of users, too. They're going to have all these default tables, but I think there's going to be a lot of views, some aggregations that they're going to want to save, and that's going to be available for anyone else to query against or a report against as well. So what happens if you click Save as, as View here, Tommy? Do you have to select something here like you did previously, or does it actually just take the whole query for you? It just takes the whole query for me, and uh, I can just choose a view name now. Uh, a oh, view name. Yeah. notice there, it only grabbed the selection of your cursor. It did not take the order right. by at the bottom. So it right. must be a selection item where you selected something and then are taking that as a view and saving that off somewhere else. Now, 
this is something that's if you look at the, the syntax here in SQL, if you are a SQL developer, you will know the syntax on how to create a view. So Tommy, in that window there for the code, scroll to the top, please. Okay. And as you scroll to the top, you'll know that there's a little statement there, create view as. That's all the syntax that you need inside SQL to create the view. But what Microsoft is doing here is they're making it a bit easier for you to show people how to create their own views inside this as well. All right, I like this. This looks really good. Anything else here, Tommy, that we can look at? How else can we build and, and modify data in here? Um, maybe there's the model tab at the bottom left-hand corner. We should go over that one next. So let's do that. So I actually have the model tab here. And again, this is this default data set in Power BI. And this, again, should look very familiar to a lot of users. Where Where's my actually, relationships? Where's are my relationships? And I should be able to drag in here. I think the financials is from another table here. But yep. if I want to quickly drag in here, get my player ID to my people, I can quickly do that. Oop, let's try it again. And we can create a relationship in our default database. Nice. Here. Well, I like how it's even detecting the deter the relationship cardinality right. has gone here because I believe in when you're doing modeling in PowerBI.com today, it doesn't really do a great job of detecting the cardinality for you. So because this is running SQL in the back end, it actually can do a little more horsepower here to figure out what that cardinality right. relationship looks like. I like yeah. this. And how what, powerful, yeah. What's that other button there for? Assume referential integrity. So that uh, that's gonna be having to do, I think with uh, RLS, but they don't have RLS in Fabric, do they? No, I, I think this referential integrity is more around looking at the relationship between two different data points oh, and saying, is there a null on one side of the relationship oh, yes. that's not linking to the other one? This this is yeah. not a real security feature. This is right. assuming that there's data between the referential integrity. And if you use tools like Tabular Editor 3, the referential integrity oh, of a relationship in a data yeah. model, you can actually assess an entire model and assume or pr produce there is too many dimensions or there's, there's rows or keys in the fact table that are not listed in the dimension table. That is a referential integrity mismatch, meaning there's records in the fact table that when I right. aggregate them, they will return a result value of null because the dimension table doesn't have a matching record. So that's what that's trying to do there. So how cool is that already built into here? And I can I confirm like it. and create this relationship here, have it available, uh, ready to go. And yeah, and I think everything else here in terms of I have the same features. It's basically Power BI desktop model view all in my uh, the same SQL endpoint available to me. So real quick before we go on here too much further, on the left-hand side, I just want to quickly explore one other element we here have on this left-hand side. So there's a lot of tables that are going on here. And what you'll notice, if you are a SQL developer, you will see things here that make sense to you. Store procedures folder, right? So this is a SQL serverless endpoint that we're using here. There is a SQL server backing this information. So it looks like, and again, I haven't played with it yet, but there is the ability to maybe create a store procedure. You have the ability to make your view. So there's your views folder right here. So if you're creating a view of tables mm -hmm. and things, that would also be applied here in the schema of the SQL server. And you'll also notice there are other databases or were tables in here, guests, information schema, system. These are all normal folders that come out of a SQL server when you build SQL serverless or you're building things in Synapse. You're getting a lot of those additional features, enrichments that are SQL related, but now are built into Power BI.com. So to me, this really feels good from a, uh, a persona who comes from the SQL world and will feel much more comfortable manipulating, working through, building on top of SQL stuff, but using sources of data lake to support these Delta tables that we're using inside this interface, which I think that's is a, really cool. And that's a great point, Mike. I mean, think about the power we've already just recapped in just a short amount of time. We've talked really quick about the analysis service having a default model. People can query off views or they can query off tables. And think about the three types of audiences here that have just been covered in just the SQL endpoint. Excellent. Well, I think with that, we've done a full demo of all the things we need today. Uh, this looks good. I think we're at a good place to break it here for the SQL endpoint for the lake house. Thank you all very much, and we'll catch you next time.